Hi, this is Phyllis Tarbox of Above and Beyond Counseling. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how our children can be oppressed by demons. Do you see behaviors in, the t in your child that concern and frighten you? Have your efforts of discipline resulted in defeat? Do you see patterns evolving that are familiar to your family tree? Do the doctors want to prescribe medications for something that you sense is spiritual torment? Your child may be oppressed by a demon. In part one of this two-part series, I'm going to go over the biblical basis that reveals even children can be oppressed by demons. Scripture makes it quite clear that Satan hates our children. They are the next generation of warriors that God is training for war. The purpose of the demonic realm is found in John 10.10, 10, and it shows us it's to kill, kill, steal, and destroy. Demons of fear, anger, rejection, abandonment, and rebellion are released early in a child's life to crush their trust in a loving God. Demons are real, and they are not restricted to a certain age group. It really does sound unfair, but demons do oppress children. And the Bible is full of stories depicting children suffering from demons. First one I always mention is in Luke 9, 37 through 42, where we see the disciples battling unsuccessfully with that spirit of seizures that had been tormenting a boy from a very young age. Jesus stepped in and he rebuked the demon. He healed the boy and he gave him back to his father. In Matthew 15, 23 through 28, the Canaanite woman brought her young daughter who was demon possessed to Jesus and he set her free. In both of these cases, Jesus honored the discernment of the parents and their persistent faith, and he set their children free. Many deliverance ministries tend to shy away from taking children through deliverance, and my response to those critics are always the same. Jesus called the children to him, and he said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these, and I assure you that anyone who doesn't have their kind of faith will never get into the kingdom of God. And that's found in Luke's 18, 16 verses and 17. During deliverance sessions for children, I have seen a four-year-old that was delivered from spirits of murder and violence that had gained entry through an ungodly soul tie. Another six-year-old who was delivered from hiding spirits that had him trapped in an alternative reality because he had been playing that game, that video game, Minecraft. And then a young boy who was delivered from a spirit of fear of death that came over him at his uncle's funeral. Lots and lots more I could share of children that were set free from rebellion and anger, abandonment, rejection, and so on. There are several excellent resources that, I, that are available to help you discern what you're dealing with in your children and to guide you in prayer. And the one that I always recommend first is by Rebecca Greenwood, and it's called Let My Children Go. The other one is by um, Frank and Ada, Ida May Hammon, and it's simply called Children's Deliverance. We also offer an online children's deliverance boot camp that gives you everything that we have, all of our resources on how to pray deliverance for children. We don't look for demons behind every bush. We're always quick to say that. But many times what parents consider demons are discipline problems in a strong-willed child. And so we know discernment is very key. Next week, in part two of this series, I'm going to give you clear strategy on how to tell the difference between what could be demon possession and what is just a discipline problem of the flesh. Stay tuned.